It is almost Michigan Wolverine o'clock, baby. You look at it, not normally a Michigan State fan, but I was definitely rooting for him in that Peach Bowl. Michigan State handled their part of the deal. Now it's time for Michigan to handle their part of the deal. We got to get this done. Look, here in this region, in this part of the country, we need some good. We've had, oh. we've had the worst luck of all our sports teams. We're probably the only major city that last year had every last one of our major sports teams finish dead last. Michigan, we need this, baby. You're missing the forest for the trees. That's called consistency. We you always know talk about consistency. I'm also afraid, too. I'm afraid because I'm selfish. Because I almost don't want Aiden Hutchinson to have a good job. I want him to fall off just in case we don't get that number one pick. Because he's not good. For one, he wants to be here. That's something we don't normally have is somebody that wants to be here. He's the type of guy that can change the culture. And the way my luck goes, the Lions probably going to win the rest of these freaking games. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, how many games are left? I thought the are going they got over. two. They uh, got two games listen, left. Gerald, Gerald I, I only have a couple minutes because let me explain. When the sun goes down on this Jew, electronics go off. Now, I have a few minutes, and I have a slight dispensation because I need to pick up a script, and it's not ready yet. But I have a couple things I got to tell you. First of all, I've been having an emotionally difficult day with me because for me, New Year's is not about drinking. It's not about going out. A good New Year's Day when, when in my life meant that my team had a football game to play on New Year's Day and it was in Pasadena. That's how I was raised. And, Rose Bowl, baby. <coughs> and I'm wearing now the last Rose Bowl I was at in 2007. I took my little girls. They dressed up as cheerleaders. It was incredible, and they lost, I think. I have to look it up. I think it was Texas, but um, a story for another time, but I've been to many Rose Bowl parades, but only one actual game in the stadium <laughs> um, because I have connections with the parade. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so I've been to many Rose Bowl parades when it's Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State just as a kid, but regardless. In terms of Michigan State playing today, I honestly didn't even know because I forget that Michigan State has a football team. No, they uh, played uh, last night. Oh, well, whatever. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was, listen, I, I don't like affiliating with those people, but it was difficult because my brother ended up going there for med school and then sent my kids all these clothes. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Um, I'm supposed to put my kids in this? But I, listen, he, my brother went there. He's alumni. God bless. House Divided is what I bought him a House Divided poster which is awesome. But here's the thing. So I'm not supposed to be upset that we're not playing New Year's Day. I have to get over that. I'm not supposed to be upset that we're not playing Pasadena <laughs> because now it's better. This is yeah, it's bigger than Pasadena. It, yeah, but the fact is we would have rather this game than a Rose Bowl bid this year, right? Well, you know what? It's like it's tradition. We always yes, hate when people Rose change Bowl tradition. Means we're not going to the BCS championship because I know that tonight is uh, given. But I'm, and I can't watch the game live because of Shabbos and all that. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I can do. I can watch next week's game because that's Monday night, right? There you go. And so that's what I'm planning for. Now, I live at 31 on my street. Now I have to go by my face. I live at 31 on my street. Number 19 has a flag, Michigan flag up on his thing. And I always talk to him. And uh, I stop by now. He's leaving his door open so I can walk over to find out the scores. And um, he's just a super guy. We were talking about Bo and, um, you know, uh, all the famous uh, everything. And uh, it's just fun to have a Michigan flag on the street in New Jersey, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now I'll let you go back to uh, analysis of the Lions. That's all I had to say. But I'm excited. Well, and, um, I, look at, I'm, I'm ex I look at it like this. I've had so many people call me and ask me, what do I think about you? They got a great defense. There's nothing I'm afraid of on that offense. But you don't get to the playoffs without a great offense and defense. That's okay. No, I'm you got to look that. at it like this. Then I ask you another question. 
Nobody can tell me a signature win that Georgia got this year. Sometimes you get undefeated well, by playing a bunch right of teams back. that we're just back. yeah they don't have no signature one, win. And that's what I'm saying for a lot of people out there. Even Cincinnati got a signature win. They beat Notre Dame. That's a, a huge signature win. So sometimes that's what it is. You gotta. It's what's sexy about Georgia? Nothing. I will be here, Ari. <clears throat> There's nothing sexy about Georgia, but they didn't get here on no fluke. So I'm expecting a good game. And I'm expecting to see the Michigan Wolverines play for a national title. That's the expectations. Anything, anything less than that is a letdown. You know, you, you can only get but so close so many times. Even as a Lions fan to where my team have been perennial serial losers, still the expectation anytime they play is for them to win. I, I'm not one of those people that say, well, I just wanted to make the playoffs. Screw that. I don't want that. I want to win everything. I'm also not uh, delusional. I know that that's not always uh, the issue. I mean, they're not always going to be able to get there. Let me see. I'm going to see if I can. Uh, there you go. This will get you back. <laughs> yeah. I'm back. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, expectation is a national championship, nothing less. <clears throat> go hard or go home. What's the point? That's it. That's it. I, mean, I will be one of those coaches that don't even want to accept the second place trophy. Y'all can keep that. Those who stay will be champions. That's it. <clears throat> now, for those have, that don't <clears throat> understand what that means, let's explain it. They gotta understand when you when that coach come there, he promised you when you stay. That's, you know what, and that, I'm going to tell you something right now. It's so much more difficult to coach than back then. Because yeah. I've seen something that Harbaugh had to do he probably didn't want to do. He had to let that other quarterback get in some games or this guy would have got into the transfer portal. That makes it so much harder to coach. You have well, You know what Harbaugh also did? Yeah. Harbaugh took the entire team to Bo's grave. There you to go. pay their respects. And Bo Schembechler said in his first year, and it was on the wall, as you know, <coughs> what was the quote? I don't want to mess it up. Is that only, you know, champions. Now I'm blanking out. I just said it two seconds ago. <laughs> only hey, look, hold on. Before we say anything, we got to stop and we got to do something very important. We got to do something I never wanted to say. We got to give a moment of, si a moment of silence for Betty White. For Ben White? Yeah, didn't make it to 100. She passed today. <clears throat> yeah, I saw that. And the question is, though, the, well, let's do that first. Yeah, absolutely right. And she's on the cover of People Magazine this week, too. They were and planning on doing this huge 100, 100 birthday extravaganza. They planning all this for her 100th birthday. And she, she fell 17 days short. Is that it? 17 days? Yep. 17 days to her 100th birthday. She is an amazing woman and very funny Dang. and and just a pillar. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the generation that doesn't exist anymore. You know, my my grandfather was ninety six. Like those, they're just. Oh, I'm with you. I'm gonna tell you just these last couple of weeks, just going because I'm as soon as I leave the office, I'm going to my grandmother's house. But just sitting there, these conversations that I'm having with her is like magic. You know, we sitting there talking about how she was a kid, they had to use the outhouse, or they had to go to a well. And my me not even being able to, I can't even fathom that in my mind. I'm like, an outhouse? Me? You trying to tell me I went and shit in a hole in the ground? <laughs> She's like, hey. No, that's not what an outhouse is. That, that, you're thinking of a bidet. You're getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my grandfather, my, my great-grandfather died 90 years old in Minnesota because his job was a night watchman outside in the winter in Minnesota before the invention of penicillin. And he got, he died, he got sick, got pneumonia, because it, Minnesota is cold, and 
I mean, can you imagine, like, like this 90-year-old walking a, uh, outside thing? And, I, I just can't even fathom it. That's it's, why when we, you look at, just when you even think, when you said your grandfather's 97, <laughs> when you even no, he, look he to think about how life has changed, the things he's seen in those 97 years. Yep. I, I, yep. I, I had told I you before, about time. I had an idea for a book I wanted to write. I had an idea for a book I wanted to write, and it was going to kind of be like a science fiction book, but it was bringing my grandfather back and, have, and him, him living in this world now with this political correctness, this Me Too, we paying for water, we got to pay to watch TV, and this world just being too much for him, and he just want to go back and rest. He can't survive in this world. He can't survive with, you know, worrying about everything that he's saying, and I, I, I'm sitting here trying to get with somebody to help me write that. But that's something I need, that I want to write. I need to, one second, I need to explain something so you don't think wrong of me. But where I live, it's illegal to do self-service gas. Oh, trust me. I remember going to Philadelphia, and they did not. It, I think it was against the law to pump your own gas. It is. It's illegal in New Jersey right now. So I'm about to get full service. I don't want you to think I'm so... My daughters <laughs> don't know how to pump gas. Can you imagine? Well, you got to remember, I, I was a, 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 a consultant, and I traveled all over, and that blew my mind when I got to Philadelphia, and you could not pump your own gas. I believe there's only two states. I think it might be Oregon, but it's, there's, or Wyoming, something like that, and New Jersey. No, oh, Philadelphia, sorry, yeah. too. Pennsylvania is like that because you couldn't do it in Philadelphia. No, I think, I think, I think they've all come over. I, okay. I last heard there are two places left. And New Jersey, I don't think they'll ever give it up. And you I, don't know think, I don't think we even have full service right. gas stations here no more. Right. And you know what? It's fine with me because it gets cold and shitty out. <laughs> <I'm not kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I was going to say, when, I, when you said the moment of silence, I thought you were going to say for Bo. And you know what? I'm so Bo was my guy, it. man. Bo, Bo made me like football. You know, coming up when I, I remember, like, it's certain names that stick with me as far as Michigan. Bo was one. And then it was a player on the basketball team that it might not even been a great player, but something about him. I used to love Eric Turner, a point guard played for the Wolverines. What, nothing, it was just something about this guy, his oh, character. I was all over the Fab Five. I never, and I was, see, Eric Turner is way before the Fab Five. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, I think you're a little older than me. I don't 52. know how old you are. All right, so we're I'm 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 going to be fifty soon. So we're 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 right there. Yeah, you know. But um, listen, you know the thing is about Bo. You know, for me growing up, as I'm sure you'll understand, then other people won't. I only know about sports because every morning I would trudge through the snow to the, get my free press and read what Mitch Album had to tell me. Yep. <clears throat> and I learned sports from Mitch Album. And people that you know him as a best-selling author don't understand how our relationship is with him. And he wrote, as you know, Bo's autobiography with Bo. And his uh, 2020, please. I just paid, get me full serve. Um, thank you. I'm oh, sorry? 20, 20. Regular, yes. Thank you. I'm trying to remember that last book that he had that I read. Is it the three people you talk to when you get to heaven? Yep. That yep. book was awesome. So, again, I mean, like, we know him before the. We know him from his columns. Yeah, you know. I mean, like and, you said, this is new, and it was so funny. And there's no when internet, I stayed with my we aunt. We were, we were out in West Bloomfield, and then you know you're out there for a long time, and you don't even out there. People didn't get time to know their neighbors. And one you know, day it was, punching, it was like they had a valet service, and all these cars across the street. Come to find out, bitch, album stayed across the street and he was having a party. Dude, my my dad lived at uh, right off Maple. Yeah, this was a uh, Rolling Ridge North was the street. It was right on Rolling Ridge, right off. My right dad off lived Lake. right by Orchard Lake in Maple in West Bloomfield. That's so cool. Yeah, but, yeah, we, he but lived, here's what I want to say: we we were on the uh, we were on the the wood side, and he was on the side the side of the street he was on. You had the water in your backyard. The side of the street we were on, we had the woods in our backyard. So I recently read Mitch's obituary for Bo. Mm -hmm. And I and I and I cried and Mitch cried in writing it because he was as close as anyone on earth to Bo, other than his wife, and he was close to his wife also. But then I also read Mitch's piece after the controversies, 
And Mitch is crying, <laughs> crying in that piece too because he says, as Mitch only can, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to think. This is question. This is messing my reality. Thank you. Well, you know, see me, I felt the same way about that controversy as I felt about the uh, paternal controversy. I don't like when folks are not around to defend themselves. If you always knew, let them defend themselves before you bury them. Once okay. they're gone, it's over. Yes, but remember, Bo's not being accused of 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 anything other than turning turn, turn, turn the blind eye. Right, and so you know the accusers aren't really. They didn't initially come out. Well, except for his son, but that's a strange thing. Also, that's a different, strange type thing. Anyways, but my point is this. I, my whole life, my foundation is I read Mitch and Mitch explains to me what's going on in Detroit sports. And see, and, it's something, and, and, it's something is so weird to me to say that you was afraid to say something. Your father was the most powerful man in the state. I don't understand you being afraid to say anything. When you had, when I'm talking about more powerful than the governor, more powerful than anybody in this state at the time, I don't, I don't understand him being afraid, but I don't, I'm, I'm not going to assume to know his state of mind and speak for him. I just, I really don't like fathom, when they go after they, people after they're gone. I don't like it. I, I don't I, like it I, at all. I do agree. But give, but given the reality of just the, the facts, it's hard to fathom that at the very least, Bo didn't know or something or whatever it is, well, however minor it is. But here's my point. It, it leaves me in the quandary of how to think about the reality of Bo and it's, and Mitch puts it in his piece, in, like just like I think about it. Mitch says the same exact thing. I don't know how to think about it because he knew Bo. For, you know, him and Bo had hamburgers together, and and he wrote Bo's autobiography. He knows his wife. He knows his family. He's been in their home a hundred times. And you know, Mitch. That's why Mitch is so special because he says it like he like we think it. You know, and um, I you know. Like they, they, they may take that statue down, you know. And we in those eras that it's probably going to happen. Yeah, but here's yeah. my thing. Now you're gonna make me get off on a whole other tangent because no, no, anytime, no, no. I, I, any, I, and I'm only gonna go in for a quick second. I'm gonna stop. But anytime somebody talking about taking statues down or anything, yeah. it pisses me off that in every major city in this country there is a building with J. Edgar Hoover's name on it. He was the biggest racist on the face of the earth. So, that, and I'm like, every single FBI building got this dude's name on it. So, like I said, I, 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 I hate to even get into those conversations about taking statues down. You can't erase history. What happened, happened. So, I don't wanna forget, I wanna educate. Yep, yep. I mean that's and and you know what? I, I don't want to start a thing, but <laughs> no, but me, not with you. I'm just saying in general. No, I know, you know I know. Like you said, because not a defense, but and what it is is people don't. Sometimes you got to be careful when you say things in these type of forms, because when people don't know you, they take certain things out of context. What you yes. say? You, let me let me use this example. You remember Dan Ros Dan Rostankowski in Congress? Yep. The Congress is the Ways and Means Chairman for a hundred years, one of the most powerful men in Congress. He went to jail. And why did he go to and and Clinton pardoned him so he didn't do a full sentence? Do you know what he told you know what he said is the reason he went to jail, Clinton, when he pardoned him? Because he gave a constituent a rocking chair. And Clinton pardoned him off for of that. He, he, but he didn't tell him. He was there, I think, a year and a half in jail. Rossi for giving a guy a thing. And what happened? Times changed and Rossi didn't. You know? And mm -hmm. didn't know that he had to. He wasn't he didn't he didn't intentionally not change. He just didn't know. Giving a rocking chair in tips day was what you did. And he didn't do fraud, he didn't steal, he didn't embezzle, but he went to jail over a rocking chair. And it's it's scary because you know, I don't want to trip a wire. I don't want to go to jail for ignorance, but it's, it's just part of the world we live in today, I guess. Yeah, it's like now these sound bites and everything that's going on, we have to be careful. And I'm just glad that 
there weren't cameras around when I made mistakes when I was in college or when I made mistakes when I was in high school because now, the way social media is now, you are the worst thing you've ever done in your life. That's what you are. Well, you know, you got to look at it like don't, this. Don't, I said this don't before. Don't social media, Gerald. But you got to look at it like this. If Maya Angelou would have died at 19, she would have died a prostitute. And nobody ever let her forget that that's what she was. I by wonder. social media stuff not being around and by her writing about it herself. Because the thing that you do is once you accept the worst thing you've ever done and accept your truth, nobody can use it against you. Yeah, well, maybe. I wonder what popped in my head when you were saying that. I wonder what the world would think of Dennis Rodman if the internet had been back then. Just as an example, him showing up after his dad died with a handgun and he practiced, for example. You know, I'm not talking about the bullshit now. Yeah, like, hey, yeah, you're talking about like him, him asleep in the parking lot in a pickup truck with a shotgun by him and shit like that. Like you said, shit that only he us in history knew about. He was he wasn't aggressive. He was in deep grief and depression. He yeah, was he sick. was he was more of a danger to himself than anybody else. He was a, he was sick from the death of his father. I mean, you know, but like again, you know, gosh, makes you think. Or Chris 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 Weber, time out. You know, just things like that. Would he have had a career like he did? You know, regardless. You know, he got his mulligan, right? Would he get his mulligan today? I don't know. But you know what he did? He owned it. He named his foundation Time Out. If you try to act like you're afraid of it, they're going to ram it down your throat. You have to own what you did to take the sting out of it. You know what I'm saying? You know, the girls in my high school at SL, they used to hot tub with Adam Oates. <laughs> he would go jogging down the street by, by, tw by on 12 Mile. Mm -hmm. um, that's where he jogged. He lived right over there in the condos. And um, they would intentionally go jogging because he was hot stuff. You know, he wasn't a good player by us. He only got good when he left Detroit. There you go. And, uh, and But they didn't care, you know, and, um, oh, gosh, time to change. Listen, I want to say one thing. My favorite story, I don't think I told you lately. I went to Jacques Demir's summer camp. Jacques Demir. I went to his summer camp. It's two weeks um, at, at the Civic Center, and we got to, he'd bring a wing every, every day, and we get to do uh, boot camp and play with a wing. And the day Joey Koster came to play, and I was the fat kid playing on the shitty team, so I was the biggest guy there because I was horrible. And the day Joey was there, I got to be the guy to do the demo, one-on-one, -on -one, me and Joey Koser. And I did what only a guy with, like, balls and, and attitude could do. Instead of going one-on-one, -on -one, I literally ignored the puck, dropped my gloves, and dove at him. Let's get it! 16 years old. <laughs> Joey didn't have skin on his fingers. He had infected hands. So I figured I had a chance. And I, it was like the greatest memory I ever had, you know? And hey, nobody can ever take that away from you. No. Listen, I got to go. It's the Sabbath starting right now. But um, hail to the victors and champions will be made today because we will see. We will do this again next Monday. Because it's great to be a Michigan Wolverine, baby. And have a burner's float for me because I I forgot to order mine. I just I just that's that's called a Boston cooler with the burners actually. I a just went and bought float. a case of uh root beer and burners. I'm gonna go to my grandma's house. That's she gonna have. I found that's the uh, the, uh dairy free uh ice cream. Not just for me, but I can see she was getting gassy, burping is a lot. Detroit thing? is the float thing a Detroit thing. I know what Vernon's float is, but it's, uh, my mother made us have root beer or Vernon's floats every year in Detroit. Well, the Vernon's can't be because it's called a Boston cooler. So that had to, that had to be, Boston had to invent that because it's, right, it's but I'm saying the New, Year's, the New Year's part, I mean New Year's having a float. Is that a Detroit thing? Now, you know what? For me, I don't think it's a Detroit thing. What it is for me is I've been asking my grandmother things she haven't had in a long time to make sure she can have whatever she wants. Oh, get her a loose Coney dog. You know, she's never been a Coney. So she, she was happy the other day when we just get her some onion rings. She hadn't had onion rings in a long time. Creamsicle. It, yeah, she had, she had one of those. So that every day when we had those conversations, I try to ask her things that she haven't had in a while, and I go get it. Like uh, her husband of 40 years was uh, allergic to seafood. So I bought her a pound of shrimp the other day she probably hadn't had 
shrimp in 40 years. So I bought her a pound of shrimp. And you would have think I gave her a bag of gold. She loved it. Well, get her a good kosher pastrami sandwich. In Oak Park and get her, some good, get her a Sarah's Deli sandwich in Oak Park. That's still there, too, by the way. You know that, right? Absolutely. 10 Mile and Greenfield, right there. There you go. And I'm right up the street from that. They have four decker sandwiches. I don't remember if it's number two or number 10, a Dinty Moore or something like that. I, and I know them. The, the original guy was uh, Goodman. I went to school with his daughter in, in Akiva. And uh, I have to go, or God will not forgive me and, and punish the uh, Wolverine. So enjoy the Sabbath, my brother. I, I will talk to you an hour after sun. I will, I will talk to you in 25 hours. Peace, enjoy. And I, we'll be talking about a victory when we talk. Thank you. All right, be blessed. All right.